Hello everyone and welcome to Introduction to Java, Java Programming Language. This is Module 1, Getting Started. In this module we're going to focus on understanding a little bit about the language itself and its structure and how it's used and how we can compile and execute programs. So what exactly is Java? Well, Java is a programming language that was developed by Sun in the mid-1990s. Uh, it can be used as a standalone programming language, but it's also applicable to web pages. You will see uh, some applications that are designed for uh, using JSP, uh, or they will integrate with Java to develop HTML pages. Uh, Java actually was developed originally for appliances. Because there were so many different chipsets within appliances, it was necessary to have a language in which you could write it on one platform and then use it on another, such as even a refrigerator or a, an oven. Uh, many applications, therefore, that are developed in Java are done so because of cross-platform capability, that we can design it on one machine and it will execute on another. Uh, another thing that's important to note is that Java and JavaScript are not the same. They are not the same programming language. They are not uh, dialects of a programming language. Uh, there are some similarities, but they really do not do the same thing and they do not have the same structure or security uh, protocols. Uh, they are completely different. So why is Java so widespread? Again, it does come from its portability across platforms. Uh, a machine, an application that is written on Windows can be executed on a Mac seamlessly. And this holds true for any number of devices. I can even take a, an application that is written in Java and execute it on a cable box or a set-top box with, within some, uh, some degree of uh, uh, give and take there, uh, but you can execute it because there is a Java virtual machine. Uh, theoretically, it would work. This is known as write once, read anywhere, that I can write it on one platform and read it or execute it anywhere I'd like. And it does this because Java is not really compiled like other programming languages. In other programming languages, you compile the code, and it uses libraries that are specific to the chipset of that code. Well, that doesn't really occur in Java because of the use of what's, what are called these virtual machines, which sit on top of the actual hardware. So its portability comes from this use, as we said, of virtual machines and something called bytecode. What occurs is that we have our Java program that we write, and we quote-unquote compile it. Well, when we compile it, we actually get something that looks like bytecode. And bytecode is a little bit different. It doesn't look like the Java program, but it's something that these Java virtual machines will understand. And so therefore, when the bytecode is actually executed on the virtual machines of, say, the Linux Java virtual machine, the Mac, or the Windows, the virtual machine knows how to take that Java code and integrate it with the hardware platform that it's on. So all the specifics of the hardware platform are located on the virtual machines over here on the right side of the screen. So Java programs are code that can be written in a basic editor such as Notepad++, Text Wrangler, or any other IDE. And for this course, you can use whatever you like. Um, most of the examples that you'll see, if you'll see me working on uh, on the screen, it will be on a Mac. I won't be using multiple uh, versions, say doing it in Windows, doing it in Linux. I will be using a Mac, but you should have no problem going from one to the other. Uh, anyone who does have a problem, you should be able to uh, send me a note through Blackboard and I'll be able to help you with that. Um, the console output is primarily our code is written to the console. So if you're familiar with a command prompt or you're familiar with terminal in Mac, uh, you'll see we're going to execute the code in those and then they will actually run and you will see the output there. When we get to things such as applets and even graphical user interfaces, uh, the introduction of that, it will run a window that would be very similar to what you would notice as a like a Windows window or even a Mac window. What our program structure looks like for Java is a public class and methods. The public class is basically where the code starts, okay? And there's a method in there called main, and that is actually the starting point of our program. What we'll find is that when we compile and execute our code, uh, we will have a Java program, let's say start.java, and we will execute, we will compile it using this thing called Java C. And so what we'll do is we'll say Java C and then the name of that Java file. When we're done with that, we will get a class file. The Java C will create this new file, which is the bytecode, which you could open up in a text editor to see what it looks like if you'd like. Um, and it creates this start.class file. When the start.class file is created, then if we wish to run it using our own Java virtual machine on our box, we simply will need to write the word Java and then the name of the class, and then the application will begin to execute. And this occurs on every machine the same exact way. So Java C will be used to compile and then Java will actually execute the bytecode on that virtual machine. 
So what does a Java program look like? Well, as we said before, there's going to be a public class and then a class name. Now, it's important to note that everything in Java is case sensitive. So it will be important to make sure that you know what you've spelled things as uh, in terms of any classes that you created or variables that you create and note the case sensitivity. Um, we will have a method. In this case, this method here is called the main method. And within the main, main method, we will have various statements. And these statements are actual code that gets executed. Now, there may be multiple methods, and we'll deal with that when we get into methods, but this is kind of what the structure is. Notice that each semicolon ends a statement, and there are braces that basically act as blocks, for, uh, blocks of code for the given method and for the given class. So if we were to take our first Java program, Hello World, which is probably the most common uh, program, anybody who's done any programming would know. Um, you can copy this code here and you'll notice that this is public class hello world. Now the name of this file when you save this should be hello world dot java. Again it is case sensitive and I know for those of you who are on Windows are probably saying well Windows isn't case sensitive so I don't have to worry about it. That's not actually true. You do need to understand that it is case sensitive. Um, then what you do is you have this method here public static void main uh, string args and we will write this code system.out.println hello world. Once you have hello world, this is the code that will actually execute. When we compile this program, it will output hello world to the console. So what I'd like you to do is to take this code, put it into a, uh, into a text editor, save it as hello world.java, okay? And then what you're going to do is in that same directory, you will type java c hello world.java, and if no errors come back, type Java Hello World, and you should see the resulting output. Now, for those of you who end up getting an error where it cannot find Java C, there'll be a note on Blackboard for the what's called the class path. You probably just need to fix the class path. For those of you on a Mac, it will not matter. I would all suggest that you create a directory where all your code goes so that you can actually find your code, execute it, and run it. It's all in the same spot. So a couple of programming notes is that when we talk about a statement, it's an executable command. Every statement ends with a semicolon. Uh, when we talk about methods, they are a named sequence of statements that are executed together to perform a task. So there may be five or six or seven statements or more that are put together, and we note them by a brace, an open brace and a closed brace. You will be using all of the open and closed braces, brackets, and parentheses, so it's important to know the difference between them. In this case, we, you might hear a squiggly brace. That's what we would classify as the brace. A couple of other notes, comments no, are notes written in the source code by the programmer. Comments are not executed when your program runs. These are ignored. And there are two types of comments. One are what we call bookends, which start with a slash star to start a comment and finish with a star slash to end a comment across a couple of lines. The other one is called a leading comment, which is basically you use a double slash at the beginning of your comment to comment out the remaining part of the line. And below, you'll see some examples there of single line comments as well as multiple line comments. In addition, we have something called a string. Now, a string is a sequence of text characters that is for use in a program. These are things that we, we want to hold ourselves. So it might be a name of a place such as Jamestown or a string of characters that are put together that form some form of sentence that we will output or do something with later on. When we write strings within Java, we have to make sure that a string does not span across lines. So it must be on the same line. So we open a double quote, we write all our text, and then we put a double quote. If you wish to put carriage returns and uh, other types of other special characters, there's a way to do that. And a couple of them are listed below. And you'll see how we do those over time. And there'll be a list of special characters for you as well. The other thing to note is that there are certain keywords within Java. These are reserved keywords. So Java basically has a list of all of these keywords. Uh, there's about 48 of them here. And what you'll notice is that you can use, you cannot use these in terms of your variables. You cannot use them in terms of class names or methods. And you will learn many of these. Some of them you will not use or you may not even worry about, especially in the introduction course. But as you go further, you will probably use some of them. Uh, what's important to note is that you could use some of the words as variable names, such as private, but if you change the capitalization. But it's not a good idea to do that. It's always a good idea to not use any of these words as your variables, class names, or anything, whether there's capitalization or not. So that concludes this first module. We'll see you for the second module.